Hey everybody, it's Mike Swanson. Thanks for tuning in today. Our webinar is gonna be a lot of fun, I think, and also very educational. So our topic today is law firm marketing. I'm your host, Mike Swanson, and I am the CEO of Advocate Capital. Advocate Capital is sponsoring this webinar. Uh, Advocate is the purveyors of the Avatrack case expense funding service, serving over 500 plaintiff law firms across the United States. This is me, I'm the CEO of Advocate. I also wrote a book it's the only finance training book ever written to help plaintiff lawyers. If you'd like a copy, get in touch with me. I'd be happy to send one out for you. But our special uh, treat today is that we're gonna be joined by a couple marketing experts. Uh, I am not a marketing expert. So I thought, who could we bring uh, into the conversation that would know a lot about law firm marketing? I immediately thought of the Simon Law Group in Hermosa Beach, California. So our special guest today will be, first, Robert Simon. I think I call him Bob. Here we are. Hey, Bob. Uh, and he is the co-founder of the Simon Law Group and the primary trial attorney. And uh, also joining us, though, very important uh, brains behind the marketing, I think, uh, is uh, Teresa Dieppe. And Teresa is director of marketing and events for the Simon Law Group. Teresa and Bob, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having us. Thanks for having us, Mike. Yeah. I know I'm Iron Mike. Iron. <laughs> What's that? I know you as Iron Mike. Wow. Why? <laughs> well, isn't that, isn't that microphone made out of, made out of iron? What it is. is this what? It's MIC. <laughs> MIC. Oh, it's God. an iron mic. Yeah, I think we need, I think we need like a golden microphone. Wouldn't that be good? That so, would be uh, cool. so I go, I'll have to go my, my, uh, my, my uh, birthday list uh, on Amazon, my wish list. So anyway, mm -hmm. well, y'all have done a ma marvelous job of marketing. And when we uh, had a request for this topic, actually, I thought, well, I don't know about law for marketing but there's somebody I see on Instagram all the time killing it. <laughs> so I thought, and, and by the way, I'm on Instagram because I have some really smart people in their 20s and 30s who told me, you gotta do Instagram. So I did, um, but that's actually them doing it. But, uh, but you've built a, an impressive law firm. Um, I don't know how recent this picture is, but what are you, uh, 40, 50 employees now? I think we have 64, 65, um, 20 some lawyers, maybe 23, 24. But the picture that if you can see it now, I mean, it started out with just the two of us in the front of the couch. It was actually my youngest brother. Wow. Uh, yeah, we, I hired him right out of college and we split a small office with a copier, um, brought in my other brother, my twin brother, who's my partner in 2010 to form the Simon Law Group because we just got kind of too busy and I didn't like to write motions. And then it just kind of <laughs> took off from there and became its own animal. Yeah, and it's a family business, right? Yeah, so in that picture, you're going to see the, the front is the three brothers were lawyers. Um, my mom and my dad are on either ends of the couch, and then they work in different offices. They're divorced now, but they, I mean, they have been. But my dad's new wife, Mary, works for there, too. Uh, oh. Both of my sisters, and they're in the photograph. I'm trying to find them. They're in the back. They're, they're back there somewhere. Yeah. All right. We'll have so to all hide them next time. The mom, the dad, everybody. Fantastic. And when did you find found your law firm, Bob? Uh, I went out on my own in 2009, but then we formed the Simon Law Group when I brought my twin brother Brad in in 2010, and that's when our youngest brother Brandon went into um, he went into law school then. Got it. And it's been a very short uh, run for you then to build such an organization. And you know, I'm familiar with the results you've been getting for your clients uh, really all over the country. And now, um, well, I'll let you talk about, about it. Actually, how you've done this, how you've uh, marketed your firm. And I love your slide. Ron Burgundy is the best. Yeah, we actually did a whole spoof of it on our website. I, I had one trial lawyer of the year in San Diego one year, and you get to do a cool video for it. Well, you usually get to do a video, and it's usually about the case, but we did a whole Anchorman spoof, and it was very funny. My wife was in at our firm at the time. Everybody, uh -huh. so look for the website. It's pretty funny. We'd like to do spoofs and do different type of things. Yeah. But I mean, I think a lot of people will be interested to know we do um, actually zero advertising. We do zero. Uh, wow. We generate, yeah, we generate. A lot of cases just by notoriety of what we do, but by promoting our results and then helping a lot of other people along the way. And that's how I got started was when I had a case and I knew it was too big for me or if I couldn't finance it myself, I would have to bring in another trial firm to be able to work up that case with yeah. us. That's how I started. Mm -hmm. and I learned how to do the trial work, um, learned from my mentors, and then we became the firm that other lawyers are referring cases to now for trial. So probably 80% of our cases are from other lawyers that bring us in on more complex or a lot of the trial work. Um, 
but now with social media, it's very, very inexpensive to to push your brand, to get your results out there and to generate cases that way, not only from the ground floor, but also from um, other lawyers that see you on Instagram. And that's what we brought in Teresa. That's her specialty. I mean, I don't know how to code. I just, I know how to do my thing, but that's her, her bread and butter. We've, it's really right. been taken off since then. Right. Well, ter- can I ask Teresa, how long have you been with the firm? Uh, four years now. And where did you come from? Another law firm or? No, I was actually in business development for a, several startups. So this was kind of in my for you know, in my wheelhouse when yeah. Bob asked me to come on board. I actually, I met Teresa because she used to run my favorite bar down the street in West Los Angeles <laughs> called Q's. <laughs> uh, well, hey, let, let's uh, start sharing some of the, the goodness with the people. A lot of people have tuned in for this. This has been a very popular webinar up front. Uh, they want to learn how you're doing what you're doing here with no advertising. So what do you mean by experiential marketing? What is that? So we just started getting into that. It's just a different way to engage with your audience. And what we're doing at AAJ conference that's coming up is we're promoting our podcast there. But instead of just having a booth, we are bringing in an Airstream um, with a complete uh, recording studio inside the Airstream. We're going to have some fun lounge um, area as well. So it gives people, I mean, not only is it a showstopper, people are going to want to come by and see what we're doing, um, but it's a great way to get people to come and come on the show, record with us. So that experiential marketing is is very popular with with big brands these days. It's Uh a very direct way to engage with your audience. And that's what we're and, and with us, when we do all the litigation and trial work, our audience of bread and butters are other lawyers that bring yeah. us in all those cases. Right. Um, and, and that's how we've always, we, you know, like I'm part of a lot of listservs, a lot of attorney bar organizations, and I give a lot of free advice and free information because I'm a big believer in the collective cause. You know, you, you know, the rise the tide, all the boats shell. I forget that phrase, however it works. Mm-hmm. But I mean, that's how I generally think. And, and it works. Um, and when we do these, the podcasts, all these educational events, these conferences we put together, at the forefront of it, we put education and how to educate mm-hmm. lawyers to do better, to get better, to, be, to get better results. And many times they'll reach out to me because I've been helping them for years on a case that's too big for them that they need me to try or me to bring our firm in. And not yeah. just the way that it works, but unless you selflessly give that out, they're not going to bring you in to do it. Um, so all of our stuff, the, all the podcasts are highly listened to because they're educational. They're real practice points on how to practice all they're not just war stories not just people say oh look at this great result i got it's no this is how you do it step by step these are right. things that you need to know how to do if you're going to practice as a lawyer and, and be successful well well tell us about lottie gras <laughs> so a lot, lot like mardi gras I, i'm guessing <laughs> well, there's a connection or something same idea <laughs> yeah. so lottie gras lottie gras is a uh, it, was, it was originally going to be la cella but we got a very quick cease and desist from uh yeah from uh, Coachella, which was surprising. But so we did Lottie Gras. And um, so here's the thing is we, we do a lot of these conferences. A lot of people go to big events. See, the LA one, there's one in um, Las Vegas. There's like 5,000 attendees, yeah. a lot of education seminar going down. But I'm very big into medicine-based practice of law. I get into the science of, I do a lot of spine injury cases. It's my niche. Oh, okay. So I like to educate lawyers on the actual medicine of things. And I think mm. the best way to do that is to have doctors that can explain things to lawyers in the ways that we understand so that we can then mm-hmm. communicate it with a jury or with an adjuster or whatever you have to deal with. So right. we put the um, thing called Lottie Gras put on by a nonprofit and all profit actually goes to help. This one was the Rainbow Foundation and then an adoption charity to help in the area. But we had an evil, an even panel of doctors and, and lawyers that teamed together to talk about, for instance, complex regional pain syndrome. There's a doctor that only does that paired with a lawyer who actually does have it. He's one of the best child lawyers you've ever met to Hmm. be able to talk and connect with the members there to educate them on the condition, what it is, how to communicate it in your cases, what to look for. And we did a lot of those conferences. And the really cool thing is we we catered to more a younger generational vibe because that's always what we are, what we do. Like I have a giant Hulk statue in this office here. Um, We did like a nineties hip hop, um, and I'll let Teresa, because I still don't know how she pulled this off, but we did a 90s hip hop, like one hit wonders from back in the day on like the Friday night there. And man, it was a success. So wow. this is our first year. We were in the we were in the black 
a significant amount. We're able to donate a lot back to charity on the first event that we did. It was highly rated. But wow. Teresa, I don't know how she pulled. So tell us who, who was there because it was pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, our, our whole idea of that conference was to make it different. We wanted, obviously, the educational part, but we wanted something different. We wanted to be entertaining. We wanted to be family friendly. And we were able to pull those things off. And so the first night we had uh, some old school hip hop artists who I'm sure that you're familiar with, like Sugar Hell Gang, Tag oh, Team, man. Yeah. Tone Love was there. Color Me Bad. Color Me Bad was, was very there. Good. And they did all of their biggest hits. Young um, MC. Yeah, Young MC was really? there. Yeah, so we wanted to just give people something different. And, you know, all conventions are great and conferences are great, um, but everything we do is different. And so this conference was no different. Um, and it, it turned out fantastic. We got rave reviews about it. Uh, people are talking about La de Gras 2020, which is going to be even bigger. And I think that we can anticipate probably double the amount of attendees in the first one. Uh, we had about 450 at the first one. We're expecting maybe closer to a thousand this time around. Wow. And where will that be? San Diego. Yeah, North County, San Diego. We like to make destina a destination so people mm -hmm. would stay the weekend, come there and you know, kind of get together, talk with your, it's family friendly. And I think it's very important now is um, I, be, I feel the practice of law, it's a, um, it has to be consistent with your lifestyle. It is a lifestyle. So you have to, all my friends are mostly all lawyers. We go to these events together. We bring our families. Yeah. And if you make it a family friendly event where we have kid daycare was taken care of, like people had sponsorships for the kiddie daycare. Wow. Um, so it encourages people to go there, go there with their families, to go into the pool and, and to do things during the day. Like we had where we had the same event where the hip hop artists were performing within the same cool tented area. There was an area for kids to come in and play and listen to kids music during the day while mom and dad are at the conferences to do wow. those type of things, to incentivize those people that usually say, I can't do it because I have childcare issues to come in and, and do it. Because I think the practice of law is it's changing, it's evolving, it's more of a lifestyle and the people they need to, to have to be able to bring their family wherever they go. Yeah. yeah I've, I've been going to law firm conferences since the year 2000. I've never seen a child care um, space yeah, provided. Okay. Makes yeah. no sense. Right. Yeah. yeah it wow. Makes sense. Great. Okay. How about uh, you do speaking engagements? Yeah. So I probably do at least one a month, all educational, all for free. Um, I've done them all over the country. And again, whenever I do it, I, I always like to come really prepared, have a PowerPoint, but again, speak specific issues that help um, the people that are listening. I get, I was just in San Francisco last week and I talked about specific issues and things that could help people. And they came up to me afterwards and people just said, you know, I, I was so appreciative that you actually gave us information that we can use. Here's specific right. examples, here's motions, here's case sites, rather right. than the, the, they go, well, look at this big verdict I just got. And right, right. It fell right for me. Well, yeah, I mean, if you get a case like that, you're probably going to do well. But that's not what I, I don't think that's what people are looking for. So I freely give and I'm a big believer in that. And I do a lot of speaking um, law schools. I go to a lot of law schools and do those. We do a big event at Pepperdine every year, which is my alma mater for law school. Um, we've empowered trial lawyers there as well. And I think we've, we've now got a big, bigger footprint into law schools. They actually have consumer societies and a lot of the ones out here, people that are inspired to be trial lawyers from the time they're in law school. And it takes a concentrated effort by us to get mm -hmm. into the law schools, to educate them on this is what we're doing. These are the consumer fights. This is the, the little man. This is the David versus Goliath. This is the issue right. that we're doing to empower them when they're younger. So um, all of our branding and marketing is mostly all geared towards those millennial lawyers, those lawyers that are practicing law 22 to wow. 35 and those ones now that are in law school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, I think uh, I think even some law students really don't know what plaintiff lawyers do, right? I mean, most people don't know what they do. They think uh, you're chasing ambulances. You and I know you help people all day. And, and not only do you help people, but you make the world a safer place uh, by uh, righting corporate wrongs and enforcing, um, you know, making companies um, make the right decision because you hit them in the pocketbook. So, um, so. Your, your recommendation, if, if a lawyer's watching this, try to get speaking gigs. How do you do that? You have to be very active with um, within your bar organization. So the local bars, you should always go to every meeting. You should try to become active to become a board member. Board members usually get the speaking engagements. Mm. I develop my reputation by being on listservs, listservs 
listening a lot, but helping people when I could, offering my advice for free when I could, mm -hmm. and then developing a reputation uh, that way as the person that is there to freely give advice. Mm -hmm. And I get a lot of speaking engagements from that. But also, you have to be able, when you get success, you have to advertise your success. And by advertise, I mean you have to promote Instagram, Facebook. You have to let people know what happened, why it happened, and why you were successful. And not to right. tease you, not mm -hmm. like, oh mm -hmm. my God, I got this verdict. You have to talk about it, right? And make it cool. Um, right. we, we get a lot of speaking engagements like that. And we, out of our 23 lawyers, I mean, we probably have one engagement a week at least where somebody in our firm is speaking at either a bar organization or a school. Um, that's just what we've always done. Yeah, yeah, and I think if you're starting out, um, if you're not being sought after to speak at a, a conference or an event, what I would do is do a press kit. And we have press kits for a lot of our um, attorneys here. So we send them to you know educational chairs and say, hey, this person is available to speak anytime you need one. Here is their um, press kit. Please reach out. Um, so we do that a lot when we know that there's conferences coming up. Yeah. Uh, we'll press kits for certain. You're actually, you're actually proactive about it. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, well, tell us about your podcast. This has become very popular, I understand. <laughs> well, the podcast started as, uh, you know, as an idea for us to be able to kind of have fun within our firm, to be able to talk about issues mm -hmm. and, and do it in a very informal way. You know, most of the time, look, we're in, we're in Southern California, we're in traffic all the time. <laughs> I don't listen, right, to yeah. I listen to a lot of podcasts, a lot of fantasy baseball podcasts, whatever. Um, <laughs> we said, what if we create one of our own, well, something we can listen to in that hour drive, that hour commute that actually helps people practice, just like these speaking engagements that we do, and reach a, a broader audience, ones that can't afford to go to these speaking engagements or, or, or to get there, to do it for free. And we offer yep. it for free. It's, uh, you know, it's um, Justice Team Podcast. It's on all the platforms. You can search for the podcast. It has its own YouTube channel. We uh, we videotape it as well. We have a bartender at each one that makes drinks, explains them. Um, we have <laughs> Teresa actually has our lawyers each create their own songs. And like um, <laughs> one guy did Regulators by Warren G. It's phenomenal if you ever hear it. Somebody did Policy. I heard it today. I was watching it earlier today. Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. We did Policy Opener to Paperback Writer, and she's phenomenal. Her voice is on it great. But they write their own lyrics and they cover songs. Um, we have the intros like that. We make it fun yet informative um, and just introduce a lot of people don't have direct access to some of these caliber of lawyers or, or mentors, but now they can get there and listen to their actual voice, what they say, how they do an opening statement. You can see something on paper, but if you don't hear the voice inflection, how they say it, how they promote it, it it's something completely different. Oh, yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. yeah it's, it's just, look, the more information we can give, the better each lawyer will be to make the, it makes the fight easier for all of us because if everybody's consistently winning in trial and getting large verdicts and settlements, it helps everybody. Everybody's able to have a higher settlement. It helps mm -hmm. every single consumer. So if you, if you empower everybody to go out there and we're big believers at our firm is you don't have to wait years to take your first deposition. You're going to have to wait years before your, your first trial. I have two lawyers trying a case right now up in Fresno. It's their first trial. They've been barred for a few months. We have showed them how to do it. We've empowered them. They've gone through all of the bar seminars. Um, they've gone through classes at our firm. We help them every day through our chat rooms and tell them what's going on, evidentiary issues, um, just to empower young lawyers that you can get in the courtroom. You can do it. You don't. And I think that's the biggest misnomer. It's only fear and being unprepared are the only two things that prohibit people from being a great trial lawyer or getting in doing it. If you can cure any part of that, just get in there and do it, empower them, and teach them how to do it the right way. Absolutely. So um, lastly, uh, you had on your slide AAJ conferences. Those are important to you? Yeah, I mean, we uh, this is actually the first year we're doing the AAJ conference because it's in San Diego and it's local and we have to bring our production set there. Um, it, 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 and it's important for us because I do think the practice of law is changing. I think it's going to be more web-based. I think it's going to be more co-working spaces. Um, I, I just think it's going to be different. I think we have to start now because um, law, believe it or not, is the last like industry that that is embracing technology and the data yeah. that, and it doesn't make. I mean, we should be the first, but we're not. Law is very yeah. archaic, and we're trying to change that by showing um, AAJ with the podcast, by showing what you could do with um, interfaced apps, what you can do with your your outreach and things like this. Uh, we have some exciting projects that are on the horizon that I, I think are going to change the practice of law. Um, 
we're, we're just we're very excited about the future but it, it, it starts now to be able where's it's going to be in five years educating the members on where they need to be in five years um, but it has to start now and if the technology doesn't start right now we're all going to be far behind well, let's talk about technology a little bit more and, and specifically social media as you have on your slide here um, somebody dragged me into social media in 2011 or 12 and i thought it was stupid why are we doing it and you know <laughs> i'm an old guy nobody's gonna look at this and now it's just exploded but uh, i think a lot of lawyers watching this probably um are, are not fully in yet so you know what what has social media done for your law practice wow yeah well <laughs> we have a lot of following for a law firm more than i've seen um I, it's a way to tell your story and be human and personalize yourself in front yeah. of clients and other lawyers. And it's a vehicle like none other. And you always have to be self-conscious what you're posting, what you're doing, obviously. Yeah, right. um, but I like to share my lifestyle, share what I'm doing every day. Um, my, my wife's an influencer. She has hundreds of thousands of followers. That's what she does for a living. And she showed wow. me how it accelerates her business. People, wow. her uh, ownership or stock and companies just for promoting their brands. I mean, this is what the world has become. Mm -hmm. So why has it not become that way uh, for lawyers as well? By mm -hmm. posting our success stories, by sharing our stories on Instagram and empowering lawyers by doing these podcasts. And we, we do them also on, on Instagram. We get a lot of cases from people like that as well. I, mm -hmm. Other old clients have found me. I had one from, lap, from yesterday that I represented 10 years ago, found me on Instagram, because I guess my cell phone has changed since then, messaged me on Instagram, followed me with a case that we signed up today. Like wow. that's, that costs you zero. Talk about return on investment. That costs you zero other well, than making an Instagram page. Well, I, I, I guarantee you there are lawyers watching this who don't know what Instagram is. So um, I barely know. Uh, if you would, could you talk about, just list the social media platforms you're on in order of importance? Like which one could you not live without right now? And on down. I think Instagram's number one. Yeah, I would okay. say Instagram, Facebook, and then Twitter. Instagram. But okay. it used to be that people would look up your website to find out a little bit more yeah. about you and your brand. It's really now they're looking at your Instagram pages because wow. you could get so much more detail about who you are through Instagram. Mm -hmm. They saw they look at your website, but you're not getting as much traffic through your website as you are through mm -hmm. Instagram, especially if you're active on it. Wow. Um, that's why it's it's so important and if if you're out there if you don't have one you should definitely start one well if somebody's wondering what do i put on instagram i mean i guarantee they're also thinking i don't know what to put on there you know what have you learned works well and gets attention but is you know is effective i honestly think if you are yourself you're mm -hmm. funny you're cool you're hip it shows you outside being a, outside of being what everybody thinks is a traditional lawyer. That's what people like. That's what people want to see. They don't want to hear. They don't want to hear the talking head that just I'm a lawyer in a suit and I'm mm -hmm. going to sit behind a pulpit and I'm going to talk about this case. No, they want to see who you really are. They want to see what makes you tick. Um, and I think that's <laughs> the first thing we do when we get a new case or someone shops as a case. I look at their Facebook, their Instagram because I want to see what my client is about, what defines them, how I can speak for them. And the same people do the same thing for their lawyers too. Yeah, it's amazing. Well, one of the things that impresses me, and I see, you know, I, I'm active on social media um, with through my team. And what I've noticed about your content, it's very humorous and mm -hmm. genuine. It's yeah. it's not a canned pitch. Yeah, you talk about a verdict or whatever, but you have fun with it. And mm -hmm. uh, one of the things I think um, was was great was this viral campaign you did with the lip sync challenge. And I wish we had had more time to get that video on. But if you're watching, go to YouTube and search Simon Law Group Lip Sync, and you will love this, this video. It is great. That's 100% Teresa's idea, yeah. and I didn't even want to do it. Yeah. We raised a lot of money for charity doing a lot of other people did it. Yeah, I mean, it was yeah. a lot of fun. Uh, well, how, how did that work? Credit, he did pick Spice Girls, yeah. which yeah, was, it was <laughs> Which Spice Girl were you, Bob? Scary Spice. Scary, duh. Harry Not, Spice. I'm Harry Spice. <laughs> Harry Spice. <laughs> I'm Old Spice. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I like that. <laughs> now we had a we that was by far our biggest, our most viewed video of all time. We've had about twenty thousand views on Facebook, another two, three thousand on Instagram. Uh, I think we have about six hundred on YouTube. So it it did really well, and it was a lot of fun. And other firms were able to do it as well, and they came up with some really great stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I see some law firms on, on social media and you can just tell it's somebody like maybe in a different country posting for them. Yeah. It's just canned and boring and 
yeah. not and real. That's a mistake you can't make is if you're going to do it canon boring and have somebody else do it for you, you're not you're not doing yourself a service, and people can tell right away. Oh yeah, they yeah. can tell right away. Yeah, they go to a trade show and they say, "Oh, do my social media for me." Yeah, make make it work or whatever. Very I don't generic. You don't want generic. Yeah. Right. You don't want big followers. You don't want any of that. Yeah. You know? Right, we have paid followers. Yeah, here's one I love on Twitter. Um, big smiling lawyer picture posts about a tragic accident just happened down the street. It's like, what are you doing? What, what are you smiling about? You know, it's terrible. Um, what's the bracket challenge you did? Oh, it was a March and Madness bracket challenge, and uh, we're probably gonna do it again this upcoming year. But it's we challenge trial lawyers to fill out a bracket. And the money that was made off of the challenge, we donated to LATLC. Uh, it was a lot of fun. We had a lot of uh, trial lawyers that signed up for it. I mean, everyone loves a good competition. Yeah, so it's just another way, another creative way for us to give back to the community mm -hmm. and involve people at the same time. Yeah. And I've noticed that's one of the themes you do. If you're going to do an event like that, there's there's a very often a charity um, aspect to, to that. Is that something you're very deliberate about? Yes. yes, and I, I was past president of Los Angeles Child Lawyer Charities, and um, I'm a big believer in, I mean, look, I, my dad was a truck driver, my mom a homemaker, there's five of us, we grew up with nothing. And let, if you reach the top, you should be the first one to have, lead, a, give a, a helping hand. And yeah. um, through our work with charities, hands-on events, and also just donating monetarily, we not only help communities, but they were the first ones they come to us to with their issues and problems. And if it's not something we specialize in, and many times it's not, it's usually landlord tenant issues, mold yeah. exposure, these types of issues. We then find them a trusted partner, another lawyer to help them with their cases. But mm -hmm. we become the first lawyer. Like when I grew up, the only the only lawyer I knew was the one on TV advertising, right? We want right. to try to put our grassroots into these communities so mm -hmm. that they know a lawyer who really knows what they're talking about. They have their business card in their in their wallet or their purse. And if anything ever happens to them, it's the first call that they make. And then it helps everybody, right? The consumer goes directly to a qualified, a good lawyer that knows what they're doing. And it just helps everybody. It just starts with grassroots getting the community doing stuff. Yeah, I think we have to constantly educate people about what plaintiff lawyers actually do. Every time we hire a new employee, I give them a copy of Hot Coffee, the movie, uh, John Grisham's book, The Appeal, things like that. We have to start deprogramming them, programming them about what insurance companies, you know, there's flow and there's the gecko and this thing, and they think nationwide's on their side and all that kind of silliness. So. Well, you know, and it's funny, we, when we have these um, like initiatives or propositions and insurance companies are out spending consumers like 50 to one and they're yeah. getting their money out there. But now with these grassroots, with what we're doing with like the charity and then through social media, you have a way more return on your investment and it's free to be able exactly. to reach with your message. So that's why one of the things why we're doing this at AJ and all these things, you can get your message out and helping everybody by sanitizing your industry, by talking how we help people, how we do good for no cost other yeah. than a little bit of your time with a few posts and it's going to reach all of your members and it goes up exponentially. So we have yeah. to embrace the technology and figure out and use it for our advantage. Yeah, I feel very fortunate to have lucked into the good guy side of the courtroom. Um, I didn't pick it to liberty, kind of found me. Uh, but we we spent time doing that too because you know, like you said, a rising tide lifts all boats. And you know, I just started a new uh, YouTube uh, playlist called "Cases That Made a Difference." Mm -hmm. And um, not only are you helping people through charity work, but you know, the cases you take just sometimes change the world. So I, I really like talking about that. So I hope to have you on for, for one of those. Let's talk about newsletters. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that's not a new concept, um, newsletters. People have heard of those before. What are you doing with newsletters uh, at your firm? Well, I think like with every, anything else that we do, we try to make it different. There's yeah. there's an entertainment portion of it that we, we always, you know, touch on. There's a community portion to it. Uh, it's just another way to engage your audience, let them know what you're up to, uh, and we try to do that on a quarterly basis. Um, mm -hmm. We talk about our wins, we talk about our attorneys and what they're up to. Um, but it's just, you know, it's a very effective way to constantly keep your audience engaged. And are you doing like a snail mail or are you doing email or how are you doing those? That's oh, all yeah. email. Yeah, um, it's all digital. All digital. And again, it's a very, I mean, high rate of return for you reaching all the mass people you should be able to, you should be collecting every email that you use, having a database, being able to use MailChimp, whatever you want to use to send out right. the newsletter. But again, same thing with Instagram, social media. If you have somebody else doing it, it looks canned and boring. People are not going to open or be entertained. If you learned anything from Instagram, how it's 
taken off over Facebook, even though they're owned by the same company. People like photographs. People like a photograph with a few words, click the photograph, tell a story. You have to know and embrace that. If you get a newsletter, an email from somebody, it's just a bunch of words, delete. Nobody reads those. A bunch of people smiling or funny, something funny. It'll interest you. You'll go, you'll click on the next story. It's engaging. When we first started doing these newsletters, probably four years ago when Teresa started, the first Mm -hmm. thing that she did, we had such big engagement and feedback where people knew it was different. It was cutting edge. We were talking funny things. It wasn't the boring old lawyer stuff, you know, Um, and it's really taken off. And a lot of people are now seeing that and they're doing what we've done. But I'd like to think that Teresa was the pioneer in in doing the cutting, the the cutting edge stuff, (laughs) uh, making it different and fun. Yeah. What's it cost to send an email blast? Nothing. 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 What's it uh, cost to ma- what's it cost to mail five thousand uh, printed oh, yeah. newsletters? You know, fifty cents now per. Yeah, I don't believe in physical mailers. I, I just don't think it's effective. It's just going to go directly into the trash. Yeah. You know. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, all right, let's talk about one last thing, at least as far as the topic is concerned: cases and cocktails. What is that? So, cases and cocktails is we. Um, Here's, here's the concept. Lawyers want to get together, collaborate, talk about their cases and spitball actual real life. How do I handle these issues? Whenever we have a lot of these bar organized ones, you usually have a few talking heads and sometimes I'm one of them. And you sit up there for about an hour, three hours and you talk about your 20 or 30 minute blocks of what you want to talk about. But it's yeah. not, there's no engagement. People, there's not a lot of Q&A. There's not a lot of people asking specific cases about their questions. My favorite presentation is when it's more of a TED talk when people just come up there and you just spitball with them. We've created that with cases and cocktails where we do it over drinks. Rent out a venue. Hey, we're going to give a 15 minute only presentation on something we want to educate you about. But the rest is, hey, let's just get around, have a cocktail, socialize with each other. Again, it's a lifestyle and talk about how we can help make your cases better and just learning strategy and talking about it that way. Yeah. You know, if I had to sum up the, the theme of everything I've seen you do, it would be relationships, um, sincerity and humor. I, that's that's some of the things I, I think are really strong about what you're doing. I I, li- I, I love exactly what you said. You know, one thing I'd like to change for you to add as we grow okay. together, innovative and pioneers. And yeah, so- I, I could get it all in there. <laughs> <laughs> Just use hyphens. They count as one word. Great. So, um, so, hey, um, I think the last thing you wanted to mention are trial results uh, as part of your marketing. Yeah, and there's no better vehicle to be able to um, to reach people than to talk about the success stories that you've had. Mm-hmm. Um, there were many years. I will turn 40 next year, and for about seven years in a row, I was trying seven cases a year. And it was it was onerous, but I wanted to show everybody that Look, I was a young guy. I started trying cases, actively trying, trying cases at probably 32, 33. And to show I'm new, I can do this. I didn't have a reputation when I started to share successes, to share some losses. Well, I never really lost, but it's always technical wins. Wow. But to show people, um, here's the what I did right, here's what I did wrong. I posted on every listserv, every verdict I've ever had, um, win, lose, or draw, to tell here are my experts, here's the defense lawyers, here's the intel on the judge, share all that freely. And then people appreciate the candor, um, the lessons that you have, and they want to be able to know that they can do it too. So our big thing at our firm is we empower other lawyers to try cases. And not only me trying cases, but we probably have 25 verdicts a year. And I like to empower the other lawyers we hire to do those things. And everybody else, they can do it too and to show the recipe for success. And it's not like the Coca-Cola recipe, we're not holding close to our heart. I freely give it every time we ask and show you how to do it. Um, that's, well, that, that's, that's beautiful. It's one of the things I do like about our industry. Uh, generally, it's pretty open. Um, everybody's trying to help each other out. Um, we're all uh, really for the same cause, Seventh, Seventh Amendment issues and that kind of thing. Great, well, uh, it's that time, it's time for questions. And uh, so we're gonna have our, give our viewers a chance. Uh, folks, use the questions box in your dialogue box for webinar. Uh, go to webinar and uh, ask questions if you'd like. Um, we will keep them um, anonymous, except for one here. He says, check out my Instagram, at Philly Injury Law. Great. So there's a free plug. Anybody else wants a plug, let me know. We'll, we'll read it off for you. Uh, let's see, uh, okay. Uh, oh, here's a question. Uh, do you offer- I got him. I got him. 
We're yeah, gonna Phil, follow him right now. So he's got he's got seventeen thousand followers. Oh, that's great. This is awesome. Yeah. Wow. Okay, I need to follow him too. Um, okay, here's a question. Uh, this is from Deborah, and she wants to know: Do you offer consulting? Yeah, I mean, I consult mm -hmm. all the time. So most of what I do is free consultation all day. Um, same thing with Teresa. I half of my day is text, emails, other lawyers asking while they're in trial or uh, they just got a new case, what should I do? I know you've had a case like this. I saw you answer question on the serve and I, I'm very well known for picking up the phone when I can and um, and giving all that free advice. So, yes. okay, great. So, so we'll, email us. Yeah. Yeah, and um, so I, I'm actually gonna put your contact uh, information on the screen right now and somebody wants to get a hold of you if that's okay. Um, yeah, you can see that. Okay, here's another question. Uh, what are your thoughts on set up, setting up a table and passing out hats at a swap mark, a swap meet or a flea market? I've actually done that. When mm -hmm. I first started, I made up um, like tents, the foldable tents, and we would go to uh, flea markets and offer free advice and give out swag. And I look, we generated a lot of business from that. Um, and I mean, my Spanish is very good and we did a lot of places where it's mostly people that speak Spanish and you gotta go, you have to pick and choose your neighborhoods and the people that you represent because we represent most people that don't have a voice. If you're going like in our industry, if you're going to Beverly Hills and doing it at a swap meet, it's not gonna really do you a service. Do they have that. swap meets? Do they have swap meets in Beverly Hills? <laughs> probably call it something a little different. It's probably called <laughs> Rodeo Drive. That's really big yeah, yeah. I would little... say you need to figure out if that is going to be a good ROI for you and a way to track that. So if you're going to do an event like that, I would track the amount of inquiries that you get after that. Um, but I think, okay. yeah, I mean, those are, those are great ideas. Yeah. Those are very grassroots ideas. The other thing I would do is if you're going to set up a table, make sure that there's a way for them to interact with you after the fact Correct. through mm -hmm. either following you through social media or you know, emails or phone numbers or anything like that. As long as there's an exchange of information along with giving away the swag, I think it's great. Yeah, if you're getting a contact piece of contact information from them, that's data you can use down the line. If it's part of a newsletter, if it's an email that you get for a newsletter, right. yeah, that piece is very yeah, successful. Yeah, free hat, free hat, all costs is your email address. Yeah, correct. But, but exactly. it's true, and people yeah. people love free stuff. Yeah. I mean, I do. All my dad does is wear free stuff. It's an old joke about it. <laughs> it is true. <laughs> Got a lot of AAJ bags around the house. <laughs> More than you know, Mike. <laughs> so here's a, here's another comment. Oh, at, at Philly Lawyer Injury Law is back. He says they're all real followers, all 17,000. That's <laughs> He's awesome. He's promoting himself through the webinar. I love this guy's great. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I think that's yeah. that great audience for he's, like common, he's commandeered our broadcast here <laughs> well ask him ask him if he's going to be at aj we'll get him on the podcast yeah do a yeah great work. okay so message us at philly injury law and uh, you'll be on the podcast in the, the, the gulf street um uh, okay here's another question from george he wants to know what's the easiest way to maximize pre-lit claims not really a marketing question but well, I mean, the biggest way to maximize them is like we have huge numbers that on our pre-lit teams, most of our stuff is lit. We start with mostly pre-lit. We get huge settlements and results simply driven by what our success has been. And as insurance companies can part, they really yeah. do punch in your, your tax ID number and no. Um, we have had huge success. I think pre-lit is a very good vehicle for opening insurance policies. I've had so many eight figure results by verdict and settlement on very small insurance policies. And that starts by knowing how to work the pre-lit system. Um, I think a way to make it more valuable is look, insurance companies, uh, they look at medical bills and things like that. You guys still have to humanize your demand letters a little bit and really pay attention to your client, their story, what they've really lost and pay attention to their medical workup. Uh, we've had many cases on very light impact cases extremely light impact cases that have turned into eight figure results because we paid attention to what our client was saying, got them to the right doctors and really know the medicine of how to make it more valuable. So if you're running pre-lit, you got to pay attention to your client. Don't just send them to a chiropractor and forget about them. Um, send them to a real doctor, figure out their injuries. If they get better, get better. God bless, but let them know um, exactly what they're in for. Great. Uh, more questions. And these, they make it hard to read these things. How do you respond to a prospective client who is considering another attorney in addition to you? Go for it. I mean, short answer is that if a, if a, if a client is second guessing your, your skill set or what you're offering them, and look, this happens, people become impatient because litigation works at the speed of whatever. Um, 
you have to be honest and say, look, if you think that another lawyer is going to do better than I can, it's, it's a free market system. Go to, I encourage people, go talk to other people. See if they give you the same advice that I do. And if you're talking to these people, look up their credentials. See if they have, have had the same achievements, if they're part of the same bar organizations, the same trial organizations, and make sure they're not just somebody that's trying to give you a, a hard sell. But I encourage them. If you, if you think I'm doing you a service, go ask around. I encourage you to do it. Great. Uh, very transparent. What is the best way... Uh, um, I'm not sure who's asking this one, but is what is the best way to increase your followers organically? Uh, is it boosting posts on Facebook good for your brand? It can be. It can be. So we we have done a few of those sponsored ads, but it has to be demo, it has to be strategically done. Mm -hmm. um, and Teresa knows a little bit more about like we just did a strategic one for AJ and it worked out real well. Yes. So it just depends on who you're trying to reach. You need to find out who your target demo is. Uh, targeted ads can be very specific, especially not so much on Instagram, but on Facebook, you can get very granular down to the household size to education level. You got to understand what your post or what your campaign is trying to do and who it's trying to reach. Figure out, once you have that figured out, then go to Facebook or Instagram and do a targeted ad. I think targeted ads are great. I wouldn't do it all the time. You don't want to bore people with, you know, hitting them with sponsored ads all the time. Yeah. But I think there's, there's times that you do want to do that. You know, if you're going to be at a conference and you're going to have a booth there and you've invested a lot of money, doing a $10 targeted ad around the area that you're going to be in is a great idea. And, and so, we did uh, for the Las Vegas convention that we have, there's some 5,000 members to go to that one for, for Cala, C A A L A dot org. And Teresa actually had a novel idea and it was so inexpensive. It's on Snapchat. We had filters for our law firm. So people are actually using Snapchat with mm -hmm. our filter that was fun and cool. And mm -hmm. it's again to keep up with our, we're, you know, our initiative, our, our voices were there for the young people. It's a, it's yeah. a cut against the grain. And it was awesome. We got such great feedback for something like yeah. that, but it was a thought outside the box. Mm -hmm. And I think when you're, you're increasing your followership, uh, a good way to do it if you're doing it by yourself is there's a, the reason people have hashtags. I hate when you see a million hashtags on people's mm -hmm. posts. I mean, it can sometimes get silly, but it's a good way to see what other people are talking about. So if you look at hashtag, like hashtag trial lawyer, you go there, if you start following those people, they will probably follow you back. If they like their, your content, they'll stay with you. So that's another way to be able to do it. But I mean, some people made a, an entire business model off of strategic following of other people or commenting on other people mm -hmm. that follow the same hashtags, the ones that you like, yeah. and it'll draw the attention back to you or liking their photos. Yeah. And right. you can actually follow certain hashtags so it shows up on your feed. So if you follow, mm -hmm. you know, hashtag trial lawyer, anybody who tags that you will see on your feed even if you don't follow them. For instance, okay. hashtag mm -hmm. AAJ2019. You can see everybody that's hashtagging that if you follow uh, that hashtag. And I do that when I travel. I like to travel a lot. I'll, I'll find out that hashtag of that area or city I want to go to. Then you start to see real people's photos mm -hmm. of what it's really like there. I think, I mean. Wow, very cool. Know how to use hashtags. Some people just do it because they yeah. think, oh, put hashtag having a good time. What does that yeah. mean? As a, yeah, I don't think they understand what a hashtag's for. Um, I, I do mind just to be funny to see hashtag something ridiculous that nobody's going to follow, but I just think it's funny. The yeah. Snapchat filter that we did, we did a geofence on it. So it was at the win in Las Vegas. So we uh -huh. basically geofenced the entire convention. So anytime anybody was on Snapchat, they would be able to see our filter. They were at the win. And I randomly saw somebody that, or somebody told me, somebody I went to high school with many years ago, they happened to be in Vegas that weekend. And they're like, why, why is your face and firm on my Snapchat right now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That the win, I guess. Yeah, that's so cool. I, I love these terms you're throwing out there. Many people never heard of geo, uh, geofences either, but uh, fortunately I have young adult children. They've taught me all about Snapchat. Um, okay, Vinny has a question. Uh, is this a good idea? Passing out gift cards to patrons in a, at a busy food stand, for example, uh, five dollar uh, in out cards with my business card attached, like probably a five dollar in out burger to hungry folks in a long line. Look, I think any small investment like that works, and I used to do stuff like that all the time. When I first started generating business, I found out where all of the uh, trauma surgeons, the young trauma surgeons at major hospitals, would go for drinks afterwards. Sounds stupid, right? But I would go there and make friends with these guys. And now there's some of my best, like they're on private practice. We refer cases together to one another. It's and it, that cost me nothing other than well, I drink a lot of whiskey, but maybe five or six whiskeys each time. Um, but I'm a big believer 
everybody should know what you do and you should be the first person they call if they have an issue. So you should always have business yeah. cards on you. Mm -hmm. um, you should be nice to everybody that you meet. I, you know, if you're checking out at a grocery store, people know you're a lawyer and they ask you a question, you give, give a business card, that's the personal contact. They're gonna call you right away with any question. Right. Um, always have business cards, it sounds so silly. You give them a little special attention if you handwrite your cell phone number on your business card when you hand it to them. Um, and they will save it. I mean, I remember as a young person, the first lawyer I ever met in college, he gave me his business card and I always kept it in my wallet, you know. Well, Vinny. All, all kinds of grassroots mm -hmm. uh, things like that are great as long yeah. as you can track it. Yeah. Uh, if kind, you don't yeah. track it, then it's, you know, don't do it at all because it just doesn't make any sense. Because you need to know if that is an effective way to get new clients. And if it's not, move on and do something else. Any handing out these these cards at like a cafeteria line of hungry people at like a uh, an emergency room is that what you're talking about? Benny? <laughs> it's, stuff here, <laughs> it's a long line at I think it's in Alberta. Oh yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, they make these things hard to read. I'm sorry, guys. Anyway, Vinny says thanks, Justice Team. He's a young, Vinny says he's a young and up uh, up and coming trial attorney who loves your your pods. Oh, Vinny says no, oh. not. Vinny yeah. says, no, not at, uh, we should have to have a, we should hook you two up with a chat here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Vinny says, like, maybe a hot chicken stand. Oh, nice. Well, nice. Uh, my Instagram's at Planet Fun Bob. I know. Yeah. It's so, you'll, you'll, yeah. Vinny, Vinny's one of your many fans, I'm sure, out there. Um, uh, there was one last question, then we're going to have to cut things off today because um, we're running out of time. The last question is, um, what if I don't dance? <laughs> I don't dance either. Look, <laughs> just pretend. Yeah, all you have to do is pretend. Put the dancers up front. You can dance in the background. Yeah, I noticed Bob moved right to the back of the crowd when that yeah. thing started. Oh, that, yeah, was, exactly. that was not. So they were all, they were rehearsing, doing, yeah. there was some choreographer, yeah. choreographer and they're doing stuff. I was like, I'm going to have Bob do the choreographing. I'll sing the song. I'm going to walk to the back and just shake my <laughs> I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> right, but <laughs> Teresa did a good job. Teresa, you can rehearse. I could tell. You ever see that old uh, music video, um, You Can't Call Me Al? I would just think I'm like, I'm like Chevy Chase in that video, just like, turn the wrong way every time. So. <laughs> Awesome. Well, if anybody would like to contact me, hey, if you want a copy of my book, How David Beats Glass, uh, shoot me an email or give me a call. I'll be happy to send you a, a copy of that. Uh, this uh, web, uh, webinar was brought to you by Advocate Capital. Um, and for more information about how to improve your law practice, visit lawpracticechannel.com. So I want to say thank you very much, uh, especially, uh, well, first I want to say thank you to Amanda uh, Unterreiner. She's off camera. She's our producer today, making everything work over here. She's waving. And uh, also, I want to thank our uh, special guests, Bob Simon and Teresa Dieppe. Folks, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Mike, thank you and your company always. We've been, um, I think, with you almost 10 years now, you know, since we started our practice, had success, and sent you many referrals since then. And, you know, sure we've grown here. And just the, the opportunity you've been able to give us to not have money sitting stale in cases, but instead we were able to use that to do these events, to grow our practice, and to hire lawyers. It's, it's allowed us to um, really take off in, in 10 years to where we are today. Well, it's been so fun because I remember when you first came on board, you know, we're, we don't know anything about law practice. I mean, really, I just bring experts like you in, uh, but we know how to pick law firms. We knew, we knew you were going somewhere right away. And so it's really fun to see long, young lawyers like you come in and really grow. And we learn from you now, all kinds of great stuff. So I look forward to seeing you, hopefully both of you in San Diego next week. We'll be there. We'll see you there. I'll see you in the, in the trailer, I guess. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Everybody, thanks for joining us today. You will receive an email to a recording of this video if you want to share it with other people. Uh, that'll be coming out in just a few days. Stay tuned for next month's webinar. Our uh, topic will be how to wind down your law practice. So if you're getting, you know, in your 40s and 50s, you should start thinking about uh, what are you going to do to transition out? How do you retire? How do you value your law firm? But we'll be joined by uh, expert uh, business consultant Michael Smith of SBC Associates. So stay tuned. Watch your email and sign up for that one. Should be really good. Uh, thanks again for tuning in. Thanks, Mike. Thank, Thank you, guys. Okay, bye-bye.